This is Eddie for Boy's Little Homestead. Today I'd like to give a review of my 2020 Mahindra 1626 hydrostatic tractor. Stay with me and let's get to cranking. First off, I'm going to just give y'all a backup overview when I purchased this tractor. Of course, the Mahindra comes with the quick attach buckets on front, so I went ahead and purchased the forks when I purchased a tractor and let me tell you if you have any intentions on purchasing a new tractor and it has the quick attach bucket go ahead and purchase the forks because I have used them way more than I ever thought I would and here in a little bit I'm going to show y'all how easy it is to hook from one to the other I've had this tractor now for I don't know five months maybe I don't know the exact date I got it, but I getting ready to do my 50 hour first oil change. So that's why I wanted to go over this tractor while I've been looking at where all the, the alamites and the filters and drain points and thought I'd do a review. It may help someone out. When I purchased this tractor, I then added the Pat Quick Hitch on back. I'm not one for the the Quick Hitches because if you own different or older equipment like some of mine, it all doesn't hook up because your hitches has got to be in line to where the Pat's Quick Hitch. I just got the Quick Hitch and I bought a, a longer draw bar. And then I can hook it up to any piece of equipment I got without having to make modifications to the equipment. These are very nice for their price. And they're, uh, you just back up there. Well, that may be a review one day, but there's, there's videos online about that, guys. This is a four wheel drive, hydrostat, front end loader. 26 horsepower with the 26 horsepower as long as you stay on there I believe it's 26 horsepower and under they don't have to put all the emissions controls on these tractors and that's what made me get this one instead of going to a 32 horsepower this tractor has done everything that I needed to do very well and I have been very pleased I have one complaint from this tractor after I perched it. And I fixed that about the third day after I had it. And I'm going to show y'all. The seat on this tractor was about that high. And when I was on it, when I tried to use the shuttle shift, you got a forward and back rocker paddle. It felt like I was having to almost have to push straight down. Well, I measured the seat on some other tractors that I operate around, it's not mine, and the seat, sure enough, was about three and a half inches lower than this seat. So what I did, it was an easy fix. Let me go over here and show y'all the bracket first. Up under that seat, it was mounted on this bracket. This is the bracket that lets your seat slide forwards and back. It bolted it to the frame of the tractor. So I removed the seat, removed this bracket, and when I mounted the seat, the bracket on the plate on the bottom of the seat, I had I did have to cut this hole. And I show you all over, I had to cut this hole in that because it was a solid sheet under there. So it would leave my field plugs and other stuff visible. Now let's go back over here and take a look. As you can see there, this plate here, 
This plate right there that the springs is on, that was bolted to that bracket I was just showing y'all. But, this here was a solid piece of metal and you couldn't set it down on there because this look, this rear end's got a hump in it. That's why it was cut out on that bottom bracket. So I had to cut that out. And of course me, having it upside down tracing it, look what I did. And then when I flipped it over, it was cut out. There's my little cut out for the boat right there. When I flipped it over, of course, it was on the left side, not the right side. So I had to cut a little more out. That's under the seat, you don't see it. The front two bolts went into existing holes and I had to drill two holes right here and put bolts through the uh, metal plate on the tractor frame right here. After I done that, some say, well, your seat don't go forwards and backwards no more. Well, guess what? I put it right where I need it. I'm the only one worried about it. But you can pull this pin out right here and you can go forward and backwards about an inch either way. But me and my wife's the only ones that operate this and it fits me and her just right. Other than that, I ain't had no complaints with this tractor. Now I would like to go and I'm gonna start with the greasing points. Alamites on the front end gonna have an alamite right here on both sides you always you have to work your bucket in order to get to where you can get your grease gun to it you have one alamite right here on both sides and you have one alamite up under here on both sides and you got one alamite on this pivot point and one alamite under here on this pivot point and that's the same on both sides. So basically, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, times two. You've got 12 alamites on the front end loader on the tractor. Well, first time under here, you're going to have one on your pivot point under your front end, right above your donut on your front axle. You got one on your tie rod right end on the right side of the tractor. You got one on your tie rod right end on the left side of your tractor. And you got one on your steering arm on the left side of your tractor. That's all the alamites, guys, on the front end. You have two. This is on the left side of the tractor, up under the clutch. Back there where your clutch attaches and pivots. You have two alamites up under there. And on the right side of the tractor, same thing where the brake paddle, they both hit and the rocker arm connect to the same pivot points. It's two alamites on the drag. That's all the alamites on this tractor, guys. I searched the book over, and then I just looked over the tractor, because I done the greasing at 10 hours, the first time as the book recommends. And I went over a lot of your frame bolts and wheel bolts and make sure they was all still torqued as the specs recommends. Now, let's get into the oil change. Pop your hood right here is your little latch. Pop your hood. And you can remove this side cover. You got one one little screw there and it's kind of i guess if i let this but i let this front end loader down here i can get to it a little easier let's see here there we go you 
you unscrew this pick up and go forward and remove your side shield plumb simple i'm gonna set it over here put my screw back in there so i won't lose it as in most engines on top as you feel port where you cap try to get a shot under here it ain't as bad as it looks. Y'all see the yellow there? That's the dipstick. And right beside it is the oil filter. I will tell y'all that dipstick wasn't yellow. When I bought this tractor, it was black and matched the engine and it. it was hard to find. It didn't stand out to my eye, so one of the first times I checked the oil, I painted the top of my dipstick yellow so I could see it real easy. But anyway, that's your oil filter. Your drain plug. Your 17 millimeter drain plug. Right there, you see it on the side. Of you. This is the right side of the tractor on the oil pan. That's a 17 millimeter. When you drain the oil and replace that little filter, which my Hendra dealership gave me the 50 hour, all the filters for my 50 hour oil change it holds the oil will hold 4.1 quarts of oil with the filter replacement nothing nothing to that little project they give me a fuel filter and I'm still on the right side of the tractor this here just unscrews to the left that little fuel filter you just grab it with a power pliers and pop it out of this plastic I will say it didn't come with a new O-ring. When you unscrew this, it's got an O-ring. Keep that O-ring, because my filter didn't have a new O-ring in the box. I don't know if they all like that, or just, I got one that didn't have O-ring. I think it, I think they all like that, because the pack was still sealed. But that was an easy change. All right, that's all with the oil change. Of course, make sure your radiator fluids proper level has an easy access screen here the screen's clean and your bush hog and stuff keep that out blowed out recommends you checking your air filter pop them tube latches pull it straight out that's all it is to it give it a little cleaning blow out mine wasn't dusty because it looks like my tractor's dirty because it's been raining and muddy and ain't been dusty done enough since I've used, been using it. All right, and then after that, it recommends changing. Well, let me rephrase that. It don't recommend changing your hydraulic fluid at 50 hours. It recommends changing the filters and then topping the fluid back off. So on the left side of your tractor, right under the foot wheel, there's one of your hydraulic filters. Very, it was very simple, very easy to change. Back on the right side of the tractor, but it's more under the, behind the tire, under the seat area. It's the other hydraulic filter. Very easy to get to once you got you something to lay down on and get under there. But no problem. And of course, when I change mine, I, uh, I filled my filters back up with my fluid before I screwed it back on there, and then I don't think I had to put but about a pint. Once I crunk it and run it, I didn't have to put but about a pint to bring it right back to the full mark. It's right here in front of the seat is where you check it. Check your hydraulic fluids, and then there's your filler hole right to the left of that. Now, when it comes to your 300 hours of service, that's when they recommend you draining your hydraulic fluid. And you got four drain bolts back here. We'll look at that in the book. It's one on each. It's one on each side. 
we're gonna go over that with a book i don't want to tell y'all wrong since i didn't have to do it but also i forgot on the 50 hour change they recommend they, they recommend you change the front end and the front end drain is right here in the center that's a 24 millimeter bolt and it's two drains one on each side there's a 12 millimeter bolt on that side and a 12 on this one to drain your front end and here's where there's discrepancies on the internet but I'm going to show y'all in my book that come with this tractor that it says to use one on my front axle holds 4.2 quarts when it's drained. When you totally change the transmission oil, it'll hold 36 quarts. And the oil filter, the oil and oil filter is 4.4 quarts. I told y'all 4.1, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. 4.4 quarts of oil when you change the oil and oil filter. Yeah, it's 4.2 on the front axle. I got, got it backwards there. In this book. Transmission oil front axle oil. Hydraulic transmission fluid. And it gives you options here. The Mahindra Universal, Sitco, Exxon, Chevron, Mobile, Shell, Texaco. But some, some, the reason I said there's a discrepancy on the internet is because some were saying put gear oil in the front end but the book. The book says transmission oil slash front axle oil, hydraulic transmission fluid, kind of oil. And then here's the recommended brands of oil for your motor oil, which I chose Shell Rotella T1540 is what I changed mine to when I changed it my 50 hours. But other than that, that is your 50 hour maintenance schedule. I was gonna look in the book where when you're doing the rear end where the drain, I know, I remember if it was four of them, but since I didn't have to do it, I don't want it to steer y'all in the wrong direction. We're going to find it here in just a second. Oh, look. That's the alamites I was showing y'all on the brake paddle. There's two on the left side of the tractor and two on the right side of the tractor. But my, this book, it, it, it's a very, a very good layout showing you exactly where everything is. But y'all just got me curious now. I look at that and I can't remember. Okay, guys, here where I found it. Transmission drain. <laughs> but here's a little discrepancy on this page it says 200 hours and it's showing you four drain points of course one on each side of the axle like i was showing you and one left and right and then one up high but on your frequent service point it's got transmission oil got your service 50 hours which you read down here at the bottom changing the filter but then it says at 300 hours or 
two years. So came away. 200 hours or either 300 hours to totally change the transmission oil. And on a hydrostat, that will be 36 quarts. So I think I've pretty much covered with the service, the service. I know I'll put the side panel back on. Now you're gonna show that all the convenience of the fuel couch right there on top. But now I want to put this camera here and see, show y'all how quick it is to use this quick attach to go from your bucket to your forks. So I'm gonna get on the tractor and y'all can see me live how long it takes. That's all it is to it. Flip this lever down, flip that lever down, and you can go from your bucket to your forks just that quick. Now I'm gonna flip my lever back up. And I'm gonna unhook from it. Can't get much further than that. And like I said, I almost didn't buy them forks, but I have used them forks probably just as much as I've used that bucket. But that ought to help everybody with a little overview of the 1626 Hydrostat Mahindra. Like I said, this is a 2020 model. I have no complaints, none whatsoever. Also, there's, you can remove your front end loader just by pulling these pins, and it's got a kickstand right here. You raise up, let it down on that kickstand, remove them two pins, undo your quick attach hydraulics, and back right out from under your front end loader if you don't even want the loader on there. I never have a reason to take that off. Now, I leave, the, I leave my bucket off like that when I'm in the garden or using the finish mower behind it. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching Eddie, little poor boy's homestead. I just said that wrong. It's poor boy's little homestead. If you like these videos please give me a thumb up subscribe and i can keep giving reviews and see you in the future god bless have a great day